Hi, this is Teresa Ford, and I'm talking about how to create a comic page in Adobe Photoshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make use of a template that either you created or you can download the one that I created for a 6x9. All right, so over here I have all of my layers that I have pre-created, and what I would do to create a new comic page is open this file, save it as something else. That's an important step because you don't want to overwrite the thing. Bloop. All right, so we have our, our new file, which for whatever reason didn't open the right one. So let's go open it up. Where are we at? Yeah. Where did it save it? Yeah, here we go to our demo template because we're gonna we're gonna work on our copy. We're not gonna work on the original. All right. In here, I've already set up the guides. Let me pop that up to 100% so you can see it clearly. Where I have marked off my bleed area, which is this gray that gets chopped off in print. I marked off a margin because that's where I want people to be able to hold it with their thumb. I marked off the inside gutter, which they won't be able to see really well anyway because of the way books open and it pulls. All right. And if I just wanted to look at the bleed area, I have that marked off on its own layer. I also have a couple of ratio tools if I want to use that to help me with aligning my artwork so it looks prettier. I have a vertical one too. And, I, and you can use the transform command T and play rearrange these. You can even make it the other direction if you need to. Yeah. So there are things you can do to line it up however you want. I'm going to hit escape and cancel out of that. So I have some guides we can use. I have the ability to jump the whole thing to black and white, which we'll come back to in a minute. I have all of my page numbers are set up. And they are broken down into left, right, and center. And the right page is the odd numbers. The left page is the even numbers. If you open any of your books and look at them, that's what you'll find because page one appears on the right. I have some numbers at the top. If I wanted to have some numbers at the top, I could put them at the top instead. I can put them on the left. I can put them on the right. I can put them in the center. I can also have some in the middle. Doo -doo -doo. And this is all about efficiency. You do not want to be creating this, lining everything up, making it look right. Every single page, it just gets way too tedious. You want to just be able to, hey, this is the one I want, make it happen. Because let's face it, you might want to have, have some of your numbers at the top and some of your numbers at the bottom, depending on what your page looks like. That might work for you. We won't go into consistency. All right, so we have a page number. We're going to go ahead and put that page number at the bottom. And you'll note that this is already lined up for that bleed area. We're on the odd pages here. You'll see that it appears inside the bleed area. It also appears inside my margin that I set up. So I look at my margin here. Let's drop our guide layer back a little bit so we can see it at the same time. You'll see that it's inside the margin that I set. So everything lines up, including the other page numbers. And I don't have to think about it anymore. I just go turn on the piece that I want. You'll notice that I also have some, some effects that I can apply to the page number. So say I add a black border around my artwork. Let me get rid of the guides again. All right, and I had a black border, but now my page, no, my page number is no longer visible. I can just toggle on my color effect, and now it's a white one instead of a black one. You can make it any color you want if you're working in color. I'm going to be working in black and white because color prints from Amazon are super expensive. But you can come up here and just change your color up here if you wanted to. Hit the OK button there, and you'll see that it turns a pretty red. Life is good. I'm going to undo that because I stay in black and white. All right, so that's what the effects are. And notice it's really fast. I just turn it on. I don't have to go build it every single time. I'm just going to be working straight from a template. All right. I have my panel example here where 
if you look at it, this is this is how to set up your panels really quick. We covered that in an earlier video. But you'll notice that the panel effects are separate from the panels themselves. The panels themselves are set up to be clipping layers, so I could drag and drop in any image with the Enter key and clip it to the panel that I want. Let's suppose I want that on this panel. Bink. Move it around, resize it with the transform, control T for transform. Stretch it around a little bit. There we go. And I have an instant panel and it all works. Now you remember that we have to we have to set those up to your particular panels. Now this isn't this is where you're probably going to have to spend a little bit of time, obviously, because you're creating your own thing. But you have a panel group that's already set up. We're going to do our panel setup, where we create a new layer, and I hit the X key to switch over to this color. I hit the G key to switch over to the bucket, and I filled it in, and it has not appeared because it's not visible. Uh -huh. We'll make it visible. There we go. We'll add another layer and we'll draw with white. Shift D to hit the default colors. X to get to the white. Come over here to my white pen tool and I have my nice round circle. When you're painting with your round circle brush, it is important to note that your brush needs to be solid and not skipping. Let me see, where's my brush panel set up? So no spacing. You want it nice and solid at whatever size you're going to work with. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and click, hold the shift key down, click to get a nice straight line. If I wanted to freeform draw a line, I could. That really kind of sucks. All right, and we'll come here, click, shift, click. All right, and that's that works great if I'm going to have a border, but if I were to turn off that border, you'll see that I didn't quite go far enough so it's not all the way off the page. So let's undo that one and redo that. Click all the way off the page. There we go. All right, so that way if I do toggle off my border, wherever my border went, doo -doo 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 -doo, my borders are here. Notice that layers stack on top of each other and hide stuff below it. And this is already ordered so that things appear in the right order when you're creating your page. All right, so I have a panel set. I would then use my wand tool, just like we did in the other video, select one of my panels, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off the border for now. Where's my border? Turn that off so I get the whole panel. All right, select that, come up to my panels, create a new layer, Oh, control Z, create a new layer, not a new layer mask. Thank you very much. G to switch to the bucket and fill it in. And you know, I really just don't necessarily like them white, but whatever. All right, come down here, hit the wand tool, select there, come up here, add a new layer, fill it in with the G. And then we come down here, pick the next one. And you want to make sure that you're you're working at a 100% opacity, particularly when you start drawing your, with your brush. We're going to come down here, hit the wand tool, select that one, and we have our three panels. All right, G, bink. And I'm going to neatly organize them into an order that makes sense. And I would be renaming things as I go be, because otherwise it gets out of hand. But most of the hard work is already done because we have all of our structures already named and everything is already set up. And now that we're done with the panel setup, we can make that go away. And we can do a really quick panel effects. If I highlight all of those, Command J to copy them and Command E to merge them, although you don't necessarily have to merge them. And just drop that up into the panel effects and suddenly I have my panel effects are done. Note that you can toggle those. You can change them and because it's all already set up you can just do the pieces that you want to make your page look the way you want it to look. And you're going to probably want to customize your own template to your defaults for what looks right for your art style. So that gives us our panels. We would go ahead and add our artwork here. Okay, there's an artwork piece. 
here's an artwork piece. Let's go grab that, drop that in. No, just, just dragging and dropping them in. No biggie. Because once it's in, then you can play. Oh, well, let's see. Okay. Down here, we'll say this layer. Clip it to that. And this layer is a beachy tool. Let's put it on that layer right there. And this one we will clip to this. And again, I'm holding down the command and option key, moving my mouse between the two layers until I see the little arrow and hitting the click. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And hitting the click to make it a clipped to that layer. It's a clipping mask. Now, once it's there, I can play move everything around and resize it with command T. Maybe resize it. Apparently it's stuck in some weird mode here. Let's see. Look, Command T. All right. I have turned something on and gotten something stuck on my keyboard. Bear with me a second while I push a few buttons. All right, we'll come back in just a minute. 